can play it to go now. <laughs> the number of words which make up the English language. Now don't ask me about that eight-tenths of a word. It's probably made up from the South, where they use words like fixin', reckon, yonder, and y'all. But here's the thing. For all the words that make up our language, they can only be used in four types of sentences. So I ask this question. Which sentence allow us to talk less and empower students to talk more. A recent study was published, and it found that men and women talk 16,000 words a day. In one case, someone spoke 48,000 words a day. No stereotypes, it was a man, and he was probably a math teacher. And so there's not the thing. Where do we spend all the words in the, the course of our day? And so in the span of three weeks, 26 lessons, this is what I found. Pretty compelling. Actually, this is probably a little bit better for you, right? So 83% of the time, when teachers were talking, they were showing, they were telling, they were giving, they were modeling. And only 17% of the time were they asking questions or effectively engaging in students. And so this made me wonder, how can I begin to ask questions 83% of the time? So in the next three and a half minutes, I'm going to share six lessons I learned on the road to becoming an 83 percenter. <laughs> the first lesson I learned was that before I even ask a question in class, I need to put the time and the work in up front. It has to be done at that kidney table at the back of the classroom. I need to spend the time planning. I need to be able to anticipate students' responses. Because when I ask better questions, Students can't respond with a simple yes or a simple no. And these are the questions that we really want to try and get at each and every day in our classroom. See, I begin to ask questions like, what if, should you, uh, could you? These have become the Frank's hot sauce of my questions. I put that shot on every single student. <laughs> So when we ask questions that aren't answered with yes and a no, I begin to, I'm, I'm allowed to begin to answer questions and listen to students' answers, listen to their responses, but not listen for their answers. If this gives you a headache, you probably need Max Ray's Ignite Talk. The third lesson I learned was that I just need to keep my mouth closed. I don't need to clarify. I don't need to always rephrase. I don't even always need to tell the students what I think that they're thinking. See, I have this little voice in my head that's now continually telling me, yo, Fletch, zip it. <laughs> and you know what? That's good, I like that voice, I need that voice, because that voice has brought me to lesson number four, which is really hard. <laughs> Right. <laughs> that is so painful. But you know what that pain that we endure in class, you know what that tells students? It tells students that we believe in them. It tells them that, hey, what you have to say is far more important than anything that I could ever say. When you stand in a classroom, where do you stand? Do you stand at the front of the class? Do you stand at the back of the class? Is it looking at the boogers on the bottom of the kidney table in a kindergarten classroom? These are things, because what I found is where I stand in the classroom predicts a lot about the types of questions I ask my students. When I ask questions from the front of the class, they're far less effective than when I ask them around students and when I'm sat by them at, on a knee next to their desk. See, when I'm next to students, I'm able to talk a heck of a lot less, and I'm able to listen a heck of a lot more. And in math class, we need to get our students talking more, and we need to do a better job listening more. So this brings me to, brings me to my sixth and final lesson that I learned on this, this journey of mine. All I've done is begin to ask questions whenever possible. I try not to ask those other three types of sentences. Because when I ask questions, I found that I'm talking less. And when I talk less, students actually listen more. Mind-blowing for me. It really, truly was. 
So I challenge you, as you walk out here and back to your districts next week, choose your words, choose your sentences carefully. Otherwise, you could end up sounding like the teacher, Miss Donovan. And if you don't know who Miss Donovan is, just ask Charlie Brown. <laughs>